I am the Commissar, that's my name. Forged Alliance Forever, that's the game. Who have we got with a claim to fame? Six players on a 3v3 ladder map. We'll talk about the map in a moment. Let's meet the teams. In the rearguard position for Cold Team, this is Hannibalo. He's 1407 rated. He's playing Seraphim in Mauve. In front of him, this is Icom, who's 1343 rated. He's Cybran in dark blue. And last but not least, over here we have B1 Adam, who is 1605 rated. He's also Cybran, playing in baby blue. And facing off against them. In the rearguard position for Hop Team, this is Balthron, who is 1411 rated, he's UEF in orange. Next to him, this is Joker, 1326 rated, Cybron in burgundy. And last but not least, this is Kama, who is 1545 rated, and Seraphim in red. So we have Cybron, Cybron, Seraphim versus Cybron, UEF, Seraphim. And now the map. So we notice that there is reclaim, a lot of reclaim to pick up, some of it contested. Here in the middle, there is quite a large chunk. And then here, here, and here. And obviously reflected on the other side. This lake here blocks off an interesting little enclave with quite a few mechs in and I don't think that can be accessed by land except just about through here I think that you can fit tanks through that little side passage and that could be a nasty surprise if true so it looks like we don't have any incredibly early aggression but then it's only two minutes in and ICOM is choosing to send his comms straight out for this patch of reclaim here. Whereas Joke is going for the middle. And Adam is just going for this litter patch over here. So obviously everyone keen to get their hands on the reclaim. But the most contested patch, that bit in the middle, the only person who's seen fit to go for that is Joker. Where's the camera going? Camera's also going for the middle. I see a transport picking up an awful lot of engineers for Hannibalo up there, but Adam has a bomber out. And this bomber might get some work done. I do see an inti for camera already on the field. So it might not be as successful as it could have been, but it might also get a kill. Where's it going? There's an engineer here from Kama that the bomber could pick up, but it thinks that's an engineer. It's not. It's Joker's com. But there's a second bomber out, so he's doubling down on the bomber play. Meanwhile, that drop from Hannibalo, that is coming over here to pick up this patch of reclaim on the cliff. And there's no competition with that yet. I would have dropped a few over on this cliff in the hope that the other team hadn't got there yet, which they haven't. One of the bombers from Adam has been shot down by Cameron's Inties, but the other's coming over here. What's his plan? Well, I've got to say, I don't think that's much of a plan. It's just going to go and land. However, here are Joker and Kama. They're in the middle. They're grabbing up that reclaim. Adam's trying to stop them with a point defense, but Kama's having none of it and just shoots it down. And we've also got a transport out from Balfron dropping onto this reclaim position and he's reinforcing it first by building a bunch of point defence before he turns to the more important task of grabbing the reclaim. Also put a radar here, I like that.
and it looks like Joker is planning to drop over here, but I've come to go to Bobber, which he's just landed there, so if somebody tries to drop this group of mixes, the bomber will take off and it will bomb them. Let's see whether his plan is going to work. Down comes Joker and the bomber takes off and immediately he sees it and he brings the transport back and he picks up the engineers again just as the bomber drops its bombs and they fly out of danger. Nice awareness from Joker there. And he pings the bomber. Where's he going to send that transport? Well, he's just going to bring it up to this cliff top here. Meanwhile, though, I have to a ghetto gunship from Balthron out here. There were two comms that might try and snipe, Icom and Hannibalo, but there are inties in the area for Icom, and there are also inties for Hannibalo, so I don't think that either of them are going to be threatened. Icom's putting up an anti-air turret, but the ghetto goes down to inties without much of a problem. Meanwhile, Hannibalo has dropped the lake enclave over here with a significant group of engineers. Seven of them. A seven transport can carry eight units rather than the other factions which can only carry six. And he's taken advantage of that here by dropping a slightly fuller load, as it were, than you might normally see. And it looks like Joker is again trying for the enclave. That bomb is still there though. Oh, this time he's trying to head over here. Nope, he's changed his mind. And he's landing here, but he has been spotted, he's been pung. This scout from Hannibalo has picked it up and it's only two NGs. There's a nice bit of reclaim to pick up there, but there isn't a great deal else. He kills up some land factories. And he's been seen, but there's been no reaction from that bomber. And he sends out another drop, which is heading over here. So I'm enjoying all this drop play, but we have to look over here. We have a sneaky little raid from Kama heading to the north. And those mixes for Hannibalo and Adam are completely vulnerable. Those four mixes will more than pay for this raid, just for the amount of time that it shuts down the production. And there aren't any NG close by apart from this one which is going to get overrun by that raid. But we can't stay watching that raid forever because on this side we have another drop coming in from Joker. It's mainly Mantis, but there's one engineer in there to get some production down. And he's certainly going to take out a mech, but will he be able to capitalise on that with those engineers? been spotted but what are they going to do about it? They've got a little bit of an army here and that is on its way across. I think that will be able to shut that down because Joker just hasn't done anything with his units here and so the transport goes down to Inti's and the Mantis is going to be swarmed by these boys. So it had so much promise and yet it didn't actually go anywhere. Back to Kama's raid, how's that doing? Well, that's come all the way around here and it's actually getting into the back, so as well as four T1 Nexus, there is a point defense here which they have to worry about, but they're just going to drive around it. And another one is going up, but these are all T2 Nexus. If they can kill any of these, that will more than pay for themselves. This Mex is probably going to go down. There's no RT in there, no Zoe's, but. The firepower from the tanks, I think, is going to be enough. Yes, it is. Nice. And they just back away. They, some of those engineers could be valuable kills as well, although there's enough that it wouldn't make a huge difference. And that mech, that was on an upgrade, so... That is 5 T1 and 1 T2 mechs killed off. Meanwhile, though, over... Here we have a possible combat going on there, but this bomber from ICOM deserves a look. It's taken out one Vex, and I think it's going to get at least one more, if not two. 
unless Balfour is keeping his eyes out and since he's into to deal with it. But I think Balfour's going to be more worried about this combat here, where his comm is going head to head with Icom. And he's going to have to micro carefully, especially with these point defences going up. Now, Bomb is still at it. It's Joker who's noticed it and has sent Inties to kill it. But I think it might be able to claim that third T1 mech before the Inties take it out. Down goes the Bomber, down goes the mechs. But look at this. You remember I said that you could get sneaking through these bottom, um, these bottom areas here. Well, it looks like that Hannibalo is doing just that with this line of fans. There's a couple of Esalantiers in there, and also a couple of Zooies to get some damage done. And there's a lot, a lot of undefended mechs here. However. This is where we have to look because Icom is being swarmed by Balfour's duels. Balfour is hurt, he's got gun and nano. Icom has got gun and stealth, he's also got these TVs to follow back to. So, how's it going to pan out? The point defenses for Icom are going down and the spam is actually pretty even. But Icon's got more hits on his top, I well, I say that, but... And suddenly Balfon, Balfon is looking in quite severe trouble. His spam is dead. Icon isn't. And Icon is still there with his top. However, Balfon has two vets. Icon has none. Balfon has nano. Icon only has stealth. Balfon falls back. He's losing hits fast though and Icom might be able to take this scout if he pushes. Balfon is into the red with just 3,000 hit points remaining and there's still spam and there's also a Nuther flying over from Hannibalo dealing the extra damage. However that nano is really paying off for Balfon. 2800 hit points, but I can be forced to fall back by the point defense and Balfour survives by the skin of his teeth, my dudes. That was a close one. In the middle over here in the valley, we have a lot of mobile missile launchers from Camera trying to um, handle this point defense creep from Adam and Hannibalo. But, ooh, that was actually quite a painful hit on Hannibalo. They need to get up some TMDs. However, this should be enough to take out the point fences. What have they got to follow it up with? Only Camo with a gun con. Hannibalo has gun, B1 Adam has T2. Joker needs to push forward and support these missile launchers if they're actually going to make headway. But we talked about that push from Hannibalo and look what it's done! It's wiped out these mechs down here. It's still coming up to take out these mechs here. And it's now into the T2 Mexes at the back of Balfour's space, which is brutal. And Hannah Barlow's raid is paying off 1000%. Look at this. There are now Stinger gunships out from Balfour, and they're going to save it before too much damage gets done here. But there's just so much flooding in through this little crack in the backside of Hot Team's base that. They are having trouble stopping it, and those gunships need to come over here and hold this back now. There's a stealth field, which isn't much good. Here we are. There are rhinos coming in now for Joker, and they are going to defend against this, but not before the hot team moves a lot. And look at that! Look at that! We have a lead of something like that's 90, nearly 100 per tick for Cold Team. That's an immense eco lead at this stage of the game when Hot Team are producing less than 200. We're talking a lead of something like, what, 40%? Which is immense. Now, having taken out this, um, this point defence, Kama has come forward with his units, but it's being mirrored by Icom, who's coming forward on this side with a lot more units, and Icom has a decent amount of T2 in there, he's got some pop lights, he's got stealth fields, and it looks like he might be swarming across trying to cut Kama off, and this could be a problem for Kama if Kama is not paying attention 
And if I were him, I'd fall back. Yeah, he's falling back a bit, but will it be enough? However, he's got Ilshis coming in, which would definitely turn the tide into his favour. Ilshis, as I've said many times before, are great. They're among the best T2 land units. If these guys come up here, they could cut off Tama and hurt him, but here, they're just going into Joker's top. However, the gunship defence from Balfour could be crucial. There isn't a great deal of anti-air in there, and the Stingers are going to hold out, but there is T3 on the field, T3 land for Joker, and these Loyalists open fire on the mainly T1 spam belonging to Icon. And I think that the day is going to be saved for the hot team on this side. How much reclaim is there there? Quite a reasonable amount, a couple of thousand, not as much as I expected to be honest. This trickle is continuing from Hannibal, but this little trio of rhinos should be more than enough to deal with it, and anything more that Hannibal sends will just be cleaned up by the T2 units. He needs to spot that and stop it. And here we can see Joker rebuilding straight to T2 in the damaged nexus. Meanwhile, as we have a slight push here, but it's standing off a bit, let's take a quick look at the economies. Icom, very nicely balanced. He's fluctuating a bit there, but he's got the reserve to take it, and he's got a little bit of mass in storage. I like that. Same story for Hannah Barlow, and a very similar story for Adam, so I'm loving the equal balance from Cole's team. A lot of power from Balfour, but he's got a bit of mass in storage, but we need to pick it up soon. Kama is storing a bit more mass, as is Joker, so it seems to me as if Cole's team have the slightly better equal balance, and look at this, they're now a hundred and... 30 or so ahead. That's crazy. That's like 60 or 70 percent eco lead. They're only 30,000 collected ahead so far, but with that difference in collected eco, that's going to build up. Meanwhile, what have we got here? We've got a couple of loyalists in here. Are they going to be able to make any actual headway against? Icom. Icom looks like he's falling back. No. I would be worried about that amount of T3 if I were Icom. At least until I had Nano on my com and possibly either Cloak or Mesa. T3 air out from both teams and we can see Hannibalo getting a good look at what Balfron and his team are doing. But there's ASFs out from Balfron. This looks interesting though, that's a lot of Lobos being picked up by this Continental. You know I love a good drop, let's see where it's going. It's been noticed though, it's been noticed by the scouts from Hanabalo, so they're going to know where it's going. It's trying to drop over here and reclaim this enclave. But, he sees the fighters coming in, there's an ASF there and instead he drops up here. And he might need it, because this is a big force coming in from Icom, heading down across the cliff. And there's a little bit of pursuit from Joker, including his common, a decent number of loyalists, but I don't think they're going to catch up. I think the damage is going to have been done, and there could be enough in there to just swarm down the one loyalist. I say the one loyalist, it's actually three. Either way, those... Lobos that we just saw being dropped by Balfron could be crucial to a defence. And Joker thinks that all the defence that's needed because he's pushing north with his bomb to engage this place with Icom. Now Icom has his H2 up here, so if Joker and this couple of bricks can pick this H2 off, that will be a delicious pick up for Hot Team. But Hot Team really have to worry about their map control. Good movement here from Icom. He's managed to use his movement to dodge the fire from the Lobos, and he's just going to wipe out this portion of the cliff. So look at the map control, that's great, but 
we have this fight going on here, but we also have quite a significant raid from Camo with Ilshiba, which is heading up here. And if I were Hannah Barlow, I would not like to stand there. He's put up a couple of point defenses, but and he's got run, but he's got no hit points up with, and against that amount of spam, I would be considering falling back. But we have Stingers from Valfon coming to support Joker, but there's no a decent swarm of T3 from Icom as well, and Joker was being pushed back. However, what answer does he have to these Stingers? There's a crowd of fighters with a couple of ASF, a couple of ASFs, and a of Inti's there, but one ASF, two ASFs come in and Valfon isn't paying attention and he loses his gunships. The fight continues down here and at this side he's killed a couple of mixes but Kama has decided not to push in too hard. It's probably a wise choice. And Joku is now surrounded by this T3 force and the force that's just wiped out here, and he might be in a little bit of trouble. He's lost a few hit points, he's still got a few bits of support, but anything more he has is some distance away. And he's shedding hit points. But he's gonna he's into the red. 2000, 1000, 3, 300 hit points, and he continentals himself out. That's the second crochet for a hot team. They are really cutting it fine today, my loyal viewers. But Balfon's ASFs are in the area to keep them in position, and Joker, having got down to just 300 hit points, is able to survive. That was a close run thing, my dudes, but that means that we still have the full 3v3. Nobody is dead yet. Now, the Trickler has managed to get a couple of units in, and these mechs are dead yet again. And this one is about to fall. The little Bastion of Rhinos are still stopping most of it coming through, but they're going to have to notice these and rebuild the mechs yet again. And that eco difference is still immense in favour of the whole team. It's nearly 200 now, and they're nearly 100,000 mass ahead. Collected. The rhinos fall back to take these out, but they're going to have to rebuild all this again, and that can't be good for hot teams already pretty beleaguered eco. And although hot team have the map control at the top side, there aren't any mixes up here really to worry about. And in fact, this mix here belongs to Cold Team when one thumb to come with them and deal with it. But there's a strat. There's two strats out from Hannibalo and one of them dropped its bomb clearing up a decent amount of spam which is nice but I don't think that was the right time to show them because well, one of them just goes down to Adam's Air Force and are we going to see an air fight? No, Hannibal is going to just fall back. Oh maybe we are going to see an air fight actually and it looks like Balfon is going to take it and win it so hot team have air superiority and my word, but they're gonna need it with this eco position. Now, we saw a notification that an experimental had gone up, and so it has. We have a monkey lord walking forward from ICOM here. As many of you will know, monkey lords are often the first experimental to come out because they're the cheapest. But let me tell you what else is cheap. My friend's life is cheap because look at this. This is Hannibalo under fire from Broadsword Sent in by Balfon and boom down he goes we saw Balfon win that air fight and he has followed it up with broadswords he's going to be taking out T3 Mexes with him as well he's supporting it with ASF this is a fantastic play from from Balfon and this may go some way to remedying the eco deficit we saw they had earlier but that monkey we were talking about is coming stomping right down the middle in support of the com from Adam. Adam turns back and starts building a point defense fortress, but that monkey just flowers on and the force from 
hammer is falling back, but the monkey is chasing it, picking off any stragglers that it can. It's getting a couple, and that touch of engineers, which I would expect to have been out for reclaiming, are all going to be swallowed up by that monkey. Forward it comes. There's point defences here. There are G3 Seraphim mobile shields here. And there, I think that we might have an overextension here from Icon's Monkey, especially now those broadswords are in. It's trying to retreat, but it isn't retreating fast enough, and down it goes. It went in unsupported, and it paid the price. Over here in the enclave, from which that infuriating trickle of Zui's was tracking its way down, Joker has finally decided to deal with it, and he has sent one brick. One. However, given that all oh, this is T1, one brick should be enough to take out these mexes. It's just standing there. It, sh it should advance and take these out too. They must know about it. Well, more of Joker's bricks. He's picking some up. Where is he going to drop them? I do like to see a good drop. And a continental full of bricks is a particularly good drop, I'm sure you all agree. Where's it going? It's going for this cliff to the top position. It drops two here and it carries on with the remainder of its load. Oh, and it's going to drop them down here in the back, in the back of the Eco 4 Cold Team. This is a delicious brick drop. It's already got one mex, two mexes. I'm sure it's going to get a lot more. We'll check back on it in a moment. Meanwhile, the horde of broadswords from Balfron is growing. It's growing slowly. It comes for the monkey, for a new monkey. But that's a awful lot of bounces over here from Adam and he kills a couple but he then sees this immense horde of them and he pulls away but he's lost it quite a few gunships to them already. And there's a monkey here to target but I don't think that those broadswords are going to last long enough to really get any significant damage done. Especially if I come sensible and move it towards the bounces. Meanwhile, look at this damage. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven mexes taken out by these bricks, and they're still going strong, so that's pretty fantastic for the hot team. And they are catching up in equal. They've nearly, they've nearly made it back, which is pretty fantastic. And that said, though, they are 150,000 behind in total collected, and that investment may make all the difference. A gunship comes over here. They still haven't taken out this, and the brick has somehow been killed. Where did it die? There. So something's killed the brick. Was it just a swarm of T1 spam? I don't know, but they do need to worry about that. And we have a crab out from Icon, which takes over the last of these bricks. But look at that. That's a Another three mexes taken out, and these bricks are still on the move up on the cliff. So we're getting pretty good equal damage. And Hot Team, for the first time in years, they take the lead in eco. But will it last? We have the classic crab spider combo the Megalith and the Monkey Lord pushing down with a decent amount of T3 in support, several flat turrets in the vicinity, and a few bounces in to protect them from Adam's air superiority. And these bricks just keep on coming. T1 bombers are being used as the answer by Adam, who has got ASX on hand. But they're going to take a long time to work through the 9,000 hit points each of those two red bricks. 
shielded T2 army is here in for camera in the middle, but against the monkey mega combination, it's gonna be a big ask for its hold. And we do have a chicken almost done here for camera, but will that be enough? I don't know. Will it be enough with this T3 army? Maybe. There's also a huge amount backing up the mega and backing up the monkey. And Icon has finished a nuke, so maybe that's something that we're going to do with all that eco, but down here, Balfour has a nuke of his own almost finished. Who's going to fire first? That's pretty heavy assistance from Icon, though he's finding that he needs the power to run it. which will fire first. And will there be SMD? I haven't seen any SMD going up for either team yet. The Spider and Crab Brigade pushes forward. That sounds a bit like a children book, doesn't it? The spider and Crab Brigade. The famous five tried to snipe the ACU. It doesn't have quite the right ring to it, does it? If you're not familiar with old English children's books, that will have gone right over your head. Never mind. Because we have to look at this fight. Two experimentos versus one, and normally that would be a nice clean sweep for the two, especially with one of them mega. But that's a lot of Ocul in there, and there's also constant backing it up. Down goes the monkey, and the mega is taking fire from the Ocul, but it's gonna kill the chicken first. Will the chicken's ion storm take out enough of the Ocul to save the mega? And here comes Balfour with a decent sized army. Where was that army when it was needed, like 10 seconds ago? to save this Mega, which is backing up good micro from Icon, but it's not good enough, and down goes the Mega as the TP army from Kama pushes forward, and I think there's going to be enough to take out the army from Valkorn, and this heap of Reclaim, look at that, that's what, 20, 30, 40, there must be a good 50,000 Reclaim on the ground there, and indeed they have pushed Valkorn back, so a hot team should be in a tasty position to get it, but do you see what I see falling on the air grid of Balfron? That looks like T3 Arty for me, and indeed it is. There's a T3 Arty up for Adam, so that's where all their eagles have been going. They're still ahead in total collective eco, even though the hot team now have an 80 or so uh, eco lead that they've maintained since those delicious brick drops that we saw from Joker over here in the corner. Balfour is putting up shields around his air grid. He's got a lot queued up there that you can see, but will it be enough? And he's still got the HQ, which is nice. I think he lost his land HQ there. Actually, actually 146 um, reclaim there. Maybe that wasn't. But he's still got his air HQ. It's under shield. He's going to shield it. That's probably going to be fine. Probably. And Hot Team is advancing with that force in mid. It's creeping quite tentatively forward. If I were Adam, I would be worried about my position there. He's got some T2 Arties up in spot his Omni there, which will be able to bombard it at range. But if they just push, I think they might be able to take it, and I think Adam needs to fall back. He's assisting this factory to produce bricks, but a couple more bricks isn't going to make the difference against this massive TP army from Hammer and from Joker. And Adam agrees with me, he looks like he's pulling back. I can't quite see where he's going, but it looks like he's pulling back. He doesn't. His Air Force takes off, it was about to be shot to five bricks, which would have been not the best way for the Air Force to go. He's going back to the T1 bomber defense. And he only has T2 though, so overcharge will take bricks, but he hasn't got the T 
He has got the gun upgrade he needs. And he's, he's actually taking a lot of damage. We've actually had him ejected. He's into the red. He runs. 1,900, 800 hit points. Nine, 800 hit points and he's gonna make it out as it. I promise Rick's coming to save him. That was a close shave, but there's the nuke out from Icom, and where's it going? Well, I think it's going for Kama, and Kama is fleeing, but there isn't any SMD there. And Kama is about to lose everything. Boom, his entire base goes up, his HQs go up. Kama is suddenly horrifically crippled by that hit. He's got a few T3 Mexes out there. But what's he going to do? What a great game, he says, rather sarcastically. And he resigns. Understandable, though, he did still have 200 eco because of this emplacement up here and these mixes over here. However, he wasn't up for it. All his stuff goes over to Balfron. And Balfron counter nukes. Where's it going? Well, it's going here. And Icon might be in trouble. And I don't think there's an SMD here to stop it. And that would take out the already half loaded nuke of Icon. So. I think that if this hits, I would prefer Balfon's nuke to Icon's. Oh, especially if that chicken's there when it hits, that would be pretty brutal. So, um, 43,000 mass kills on Icon's, and boom! Look at that, that is horrific for the color team as the nuke from Balfon lands, and it's got nearly 90,000 mass killed, twice as effective as the nuke from Icom, and of course Icom doesn't have any nukes now, and Balfon does, though not if that Arty has anything to say about it. There's a couple of shields there, only one of them actually covers the nuke, and the Arty's picking off mixes, which is quite nice, though I don't know whether that was just good luck from its randomness, or whether it's actually targeted them. Now I think he's targeting the nuke back here. However, we have a Novax up from Balfron and there are shields coming up to cover the uh, artillery installation and the air grid. You can see them killed here and we've got them being built. And Seraphim T3 shields are the best shields. One Novax isn't going to do it, but we might have a power problem if he's able to Novax out these power plants before the shields go up. He takes out one and he advances. Oh, nice job killing the engines that are building the shields. I like that. Let's have a quick overview of the map. Well, we have a mega guard in the middle for Icon, but it's almost dead. It's killed this chicken. But there's one brick shooting here which is just not answering, and a lot of artillery fire which from T1 units, which might cause a problem for the hell no, it won't just uh, smash that. That mega might just survive. Meanwhile though, if the HQ goes down to the Novaks, that's gonna be a nice pickup for Balfour, but it's gonna take a long time for the um the Novax to work through all those hit points and if I were him I would be going for these power plants and he does because those seraphim shields draw a lot of power and if you can take out those power plants then you will have free reign. Ooh nice drop here again from Joker as well and it's doing more equal damage to the core team though core team aren't that far behind. Right, now we the worst of the new, but there goes one of the power plants. Take out the other one, Balfour, take out the other, and then you'll be able to know about the Arty. How is the Arty doing? Well, Balfour is heavily shielded, because he's lost a few mexes to it. Oh, and he's also given Joker the front line step, so Joker so and Balfour can focus on the air and the Arty side. That's pretty nice. Balfon finishes a fat boy and gives it to Joker and he'll need it because I think this grip force could actually pose a threat to their forward position.
and the shields have now gone up and it looks like there is enough power to keep them running and the second arc has been started for Adam. Hannibalo points out the new which is not loading that fast because I guess that all the equal is going into the snowbacks and the RT continues to rain down on the new position. I don't like Joker's comp position, he could easily be sniped there. The fat boy comes to defend against these bricks and this mega, but they've already taken out a mech or two and they could do more if they back away from the fat boy. See a monkey in here could provide a bit of scale to cover would be lovely because then the faculty wouldn't be able to see them. This force where's it trying to go? It's pushing forward here. If it can take up this emplacement, which has one, two, three, three T3 mechs. Four T3 mechs, then that would be a delicious pickup for Cold T. And at the moment they've only got these T1 bombers crossing it. However, Balfon has just finished a second Novax, and I think that might be the decider. He might now have enough Nova Seas to get through those shields. And if he could take out the RT, then Cold's team will be in a precarious position. The Eagles are now balanced, the total amount of Eagle Protect is balanced. So from that immense initial lead that Cold team got after that raid by Hannibal to here, what team have leveled things up? Who do you think is going to win? We've got these Novaxes going one way, but we've got Arty going the other way, and that said, the second Arty isn't going up very fast. And Adam is under Novax fire, but he's just enough under the shield by the looks of things to handle it, and Balfour returns to targeting power. I think that's a good call. And that looks like the shield, that looks like a power failure for Cold Team. And this is what Balfour has to take advantage of. He continues targeting the power, I like that. The shields pop back up. But this Cybron shield won't be enough to hold up the two Novaxes, even if... And down the shields go. If he focuses the Novax fire, this could be brutal. Cold team still has the map control and the crab has indeed taken out this expansion here. But the RT is just not getting through for Adam. There's enough shields from Balfour to hold it off and with only one RT he's not going to be able to make it. That power generator is down and Adam must be having power problems. He's focusing everything on the RT now. He knows he's got to win the standoff if he wants to win the game. But the power generators from ICOM just aren't holding up. And the shields go down again. Now is your chance, Balfour. Now is your chance to focus those novices. Take out the air grid, take out the power, take out the artillery. Or take out the SMD. That's going to be beautiful because we know that Balfour still has a new. If he can take it out, and he takes it out. The SMD is down, and I think there's only one way it can go from here. It was put upon, so Balfour knows that, and he targets it. I think, my loyal viewers, that this is it. I think it's all over but the quiet. I think the fat lady has sunk. I think they think it's all over. It might well be now. I don't think there's anything to stop it, and he's now pointing the novices over here because he's pretty confident that this whole base is going up when the nuke hits. Adam is running, but he might be running in the wrong direction. Down comes the nuke. Boom! The shockwave comes out. Adam is caught in the explosion and goes up too. And Icom is left all on his own with just 178 eco, with no air grid, with no nothing, and GG he calls. Despite having the map control, despite having had the eco for so much of the game, 
Hot team have won as Icon resigns. What a game, my loyal viewers. It looked like Cold team had it early on. That raid from Hanna Barlow took out so much. 70% lead on Eco. Like, for every 100 mass Hot team were putting out, Cold team were putting out 170. That's crazy. How did they not win from that? Oh, I think they invested too much there that Joker could easily counter by just keeping that trickle going. And if they put that into slightly more, slightly earlier, then they would have been able to turn the tide. That's my feeling. The nuke exchange went massively in favour of Hot Team as well. The RT didn't just make quite enough of a difference. What do you think could have changed it? What do you think was the play of game? Tell me in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I am the Commissar and I will see you next time.